Dornell Wright goes 10th overall to the Chicago Bears. I didn't see that one coming. I'm not sure if you saw that one coming, but Tennessee got a top 10 pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. We're going to recap all that and more of what's to come this weekend right here on Locked on Balls. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome to it. This is your Friday edition of Locked On Balls. I am your host, Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys being here today and following along as you always do. Shout out to you everydayers. And boy, do we have a whole lot to get into here today. Darnell Wright selected 10th overall in the 2023 NFL Draft by the Chicago Bears. Going to play some audio, going to discuss this one at nauseum. And man, this is a really, really good pickup. And gosh, this is so good for the University of Tennessee. I'll get into that a little bit later. Plus, Hendon Hooker was not selected in the first round. Uh, Potentials for him in day two. And then what about the rest of the volunteers? Best available per the NFL Drafts. Uh, you know, website and ESPN.com and a little bit of a draft overview. We're diving headfirst into the NFL draft. Everything that was the first round here on Friday's show. Again, appreciate you guys for being here. You can always follow along, become an everydayer of Locked On Balls by subscribing to uh, Locked On Balls on the YouTube channel. Anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Odyssey app, download, uh, uh, subscribe, follow us there, and uh, sign up for the alerts as well. So every time I post an episode, you guys will get notified. Uh, were you surprised that Darnell Wright was selected 10th overall? You know, when we did our little mock yesterday and I gave you my selections, I'll get to my Hendon Hooker stuff here in segment two. This one's all about Darnell Wright. Um, I said 16th to the Washington Commanders because I thought he was going to be picked in the teens somewhere, maybe late teens, Commanders, Steelers, maybe the New York Jets. Um, to one of those teams, knowing the Chicago Bears did like him, knowing the Chicago Bears coaching staff coached him up in the Senior Bowl, knowing they had that relationship there, but with the Bears picking at nine, I just, I just didn't see it, and I didn't think that they were going to trade out of the top ten. Uh, lo and behold, was the drafts going on 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 Thursday nights in the first round? Chicago trades with Philadelphia, who was sitting at tenth. And they went up to nine, and uh, knowing if you're Chicago, hey, uh, just like in draft day, right? It's Vontae Mack, no matter what, from Kevin Costner. Well, I had some fun with it. Actually, Grant Ramey had some fun with it. He, you know, photoshopped Hendon Hooker, no matter what, and I was posting that all over social on Thursday leading up to the draft. But that's kind of what the Chicago Bears, in their mind, they're like, hey, Darnell Wright's my guy. Darnell Wright, no matter what. So when the phone started ringing, like, hey, do you want to trade back? They're probably sitting here like, hey, no one else is going to take Darnell Wright in the in the top 10, right? Yeah, I can trade back one spot. What are you going to give me? So they loaded up, and they got some stuff for the Eagles to move up one spot to select Jalen Carter. And by the way, the Georgia Bulldogs, just a feeder program, apparently, to the Philadelphia Eagles. They got Jalen Carter. They got Nolan Smith. They racked up on the defensive side. They now have four starters uh, from Georgia's 2021 defense, if you go back to last year's draft as well. But anyway, we're talking balls here. And so with the 10th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright, University of Tennessee offensive tackle. Darnell became the second offensive lineman drafted. Paris Johnson Jr. went way up more than he was projected by at least five or six spots. He went sixth overall to the Arizona Cardinals, and Darnell becomes the second tackle, second offensive lineman drafted. Peter Skronowski, I should probably learn how to say his name because uh, he was drafted by my Titans, and I'll get into that a little bit more. There were some... There were some nerves in that press box as I was covering uh, the baseball game at Lindsey Nelson Stadium on Thursday and just seeing Will Levis slide, slide, slide. I was like, Tennessee, please don't pick Will Levis. Thankfully, they got Peter Skronowski, who they need some offensive tackle help. I think he's going to play guard in the National Football League. But anyway, Darnell Wright was selected in front of him, and and the guy from Northwestern right behind him was kind of the highest-rated offensive tackle in the class, and uh, he was mocked you know, more so than all those other guys. And Broderick Jones was picked by the Steelers at 14, who moved up. Uh, He was the third offensive tackle selected. And then you had Antoine Harrison from Oklahoma. He went 28th to the Jaguars. I think those were the only offensive tackles selected. Okay, so you had had Paris Johnson Jr. going 6th to the Cardinals. 
Darnell Wright going to the Bears at 10. Peter Skronowski going 11th to the uh, Titans. Then you had Broderick Jones going 14th to the Steelers. So those are the big four in terms of the offensive tackle. And then one more offensive tackle went later in the first round. Anton Harrison from Oklahoma uh, going 28th to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to play a little bit of stuff for you guys right here. I kind of put this together. This is courtesy of you know Tennessee social media accounts. Uh, this is courtesy of the pictures from Tennessee. Uh, you can check it out at Vol Athletics, utsports.com, UT Athletic Communications Department. Uh, the audio you're hearing is partially some from there, partially some from the NFL Network, some from the Chicago Bears social media account as well. So I kind of put a collage here together for you. This is what it was like for Darnell Wright getting drafted, uh, you know, immediate reactions, what it felt like with him and his family, and kind of what the commentary was like from the NFL Network after the pick. Give this a listen. Darnell Wright going 10th overall to the Chicago Bears. What's up, y'all? What's up, Bears fans? Darnell Wright here, ready to get to work. Bear down, baby. What up, man? How you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a little bit in shock, a little bit. I'm just trying to see her, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm happy. Thank you, man. Thank you. Tell, tell Coach Pose, thank you. Tell Coach Pose, thank you. There are some other options With for them. With the 10th pick Here in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Tennessee. All right. Wow. So it is Darnell Wright who is not here tonight. This is the second offensive lineman off the board. Does that surprise you? A little bit. Yeah. No, this is a very talented player, CD. This is your Tennessee Vol. We just saw Jalen Carter go. He saw a little bit of Jalen Carter held up well, but it was what he did against Will Anderson. That's what really put him on the map this year. A totally different player last year than what we saw this year. He's on the right side this year. Again, against Anderson, there weren't a ton of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, but when he did have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, he was fine. Here he is against Jalen Carter. We just saw go off the board. Did a great job against him. He's 330 plus pounds. He is physical. He is strong. Here he is against Greasy in the bowl game. So his tape, you want to see him go up against good players. You see him go up against great players. And he has that ability to knock you off the ball. This this draft for the Bears and this offseason has all been about Justin Fields. And they just got a physical mauling offensive tackle. And it's told you that they wanted to tackle because Peter Skaronsky sitting right there in the in state, right there in city. And they end up going Darnell Wright to go with Braxton Jones, a rookie last year. The top 10 is complete. All right, going to give you some instant reactions, what they're saying about the Darnell Wright pick. You heard a little bit there from the NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. Uh, you heard from VFL Charles Davis, who was in that clip, as you heard the NFL Network's uh, call of the number 10 overall pick. Let's hear from ESPN, or I'm going to read it to you, from ESPN's Lewis Reddick, who has been on Darnell Wright the entire time. This is his favorite prospect of this class, saying in recent weeks he believes he can be the best guy out of this entire draft class. And this is what Lewis Reddick had to say, former uh, general manager, uh, director of player development in the National Football League. He says, quote, I believe that this young man, when it's all said and done, has the ability to be the best player in the draft. At six foot five, 333 pounds, all cracked five flat in the uh, 40-yard dash. He is big, mean, nasty. Ask Will Anderson. I asked Will Anderson, who was the best player you played against. He instantly said, oh, that offensive tackle from Tennessee. I said, darn all right, huh? He said, yeah, he's got feet. He's got a punch. He's got lateral ability. He can absolutely knock you off the football and knock you five yards off. Uh, that's um, that's Brian Breesey right there. Uh, he's taking him on on the other side of the center, five yards down the field. And as far as being a mauler, look, he's going to finish it, even in pass pro. If you let up at all, you are not going to get off. He's going to put you in the ground like that. He's going to put his helmet right in your chest. And I can tell you this, as far as recovery, if you're rushing against this guy, you're saying, where should I go? What should I do? I can't run down the middle. I can't get around the edge. And I can't get out in space. And I'm a second layer player. Make sure your chin strap is buckled. Just make sure it's buckled. He's plug and play day one. That is ESPN's Lewis Reddick. ESPN's Booker McFarland said, 
Just like Arizona getting Paris Johnson Jr., Chicago gets the tackle to protect Justin Fields. He was sacked 55 times last year. You've got to protect the quarterback, and you've got a guy that adds a little mean streak there as well. Here's ESPN's Mel Kuyper Jr. And it wasn't just Will Anderson Jr. He neutralized LSU's B.J. Ojolari as well. This was in back-to-back games, mind you. Uh, he went up against Byron Young every day in practice. Byron Young will probably be a second-round pick coming off the edge in that Tennessee Vols program. Wright has 27 starts at right tackle, 13 at left tackle, 2 at guard. This is Ryan Poles, the GM, saying, I've got to get me a tackle. I've got a young quarterback. So that's some of the instant reactions from ESPN, the NFL Network, and all that good stuff. So, man, what what, what a selection for Tennessee. Darnell Wright becoming the highest offensive lineman drafted uh, from the Vols program since Jawan James went 19th overall in 2014. The first first first-round selection for Tennessee since uh, Derek Barnett in 2017. Of course, he was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. What a night for Tennessee. Incredible. And I know Hinton Hooker didn't get selected in the first round, and and we'll go back and and we'll talk about that here in segment number two. But Darnell Wright, just a young guy. Again, he's only going to be 22 years old. His rookie season in the National Football League. A guy that contemplated serious, seriously, to coming back and playing, taking advantage of that COVID free year of eligibility and playing for the Vols again in 2023. He seriously thought about it. And he got some great advice that, hey, you need to go. You're going to have an incredible draft process. They're going to fall in love with you. The Senior Bowl, the NFL Combine, he did all that. And then lo and behold, the Chicago Bears, who had that relationship with him from the Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama, said, I like that guy. I'm going to take that guy. And Darnell Wright selected 10th overall by the Chicago Bears. Man, I again, I didn't see that coming. Uh, that that's a tip of the cap, and and what this means for Josh Heupel moving forward, what this means for Glenn Ellerby moving forward, recruiting implications from this, just massive, absolutely massive. So Darnell Wright, congratulations to him, his family. Hope you guys enjoyed that audio, a little bit from the Vol Twitter account, UT Athletic Communications. Uh, go check them out there, Chicago Bears Twitter. Uh, the NFL Network, that was the call, uh, you know, the, the telecast call. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due. But hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll discuss Will or we'll discuss um, Hendon Hooker, what this means for him in round two and some other balls. And we'll kind of do a draft overview that's coming up next here in segment number two of Locked on Balls. But hey, guys, if you're looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. That is built. If you're like me and Want a snack, but don't want to have all those unnecessary calories with swimsuit season right around the corner? Try Built. It is amazing tasting and amazing for you because it's covered in 100% real chocolate. But it's not just the chocolate, right? They're packed with 17 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar, 130 calories, and coming in unbelievable, unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. And now the best part about this is... You don't have to just order from Built.com anymore. You can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club, and they have your Built Bars and Puffs available for you there. So check out your local Sam's, your local Walmart, or continuing to order specialty flavors. All that at Built.com. All right, guys, welcome back into it. Your Friday edition of Locked On Vols. I'm your host, Eric Kane. We are recapping the NFL Draft first round, where Tennessee's Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Went 10th overall to the Chicago Bears. The Bears, uh, what what a selection, what a pick. Um, again, we have we have been talking a whole lot of Darnell Wright the last couple of weeks, last couple of months since the season, saying, hey, he is going to be a first-round pick. Uh, never envisioned he was going to be a top-10 pick, so uh, that is awesome. Something else, at least here on this show, uh, that I've been beating the drum for was Hendon Hooker is going to be a first-round pick. Hendon Hooker is going to be a first-round pick. Hendon Hooker is going to be a first-round pick. And it's not, I mean, we all love Hendon Hooker here, obviously. We watch Tennessee. We support Tennessee. I've covered Tennessee the last couple of years. We've seen him play. We know how smart he is and all that. And, and so when I say this, it's no disrespect, but, I mean, he doesn't have a first-round grade, right, by, by most draft analysts. But as I said and what Mel, not Mel, uh, what um, Tom McShay said, uh, you know, earlier this week, how it works is if you have a second round grade on a guy, a lot of times you're going to move up and get him in the first round simply because you want to get that fifth year option. And that's just kind of how the NFL draft works. Well, it didn't work out that way for Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker was not selected in the first round. 
And so, hey, it is what it is. I'm not Mel Kuyper, but I was wrong on this one. I'm not an NFL draft analyst, but I I was wrong on this one. I thought for sure that Hendon Hooker was going to be taken in the first round of the NFL draft. Now, I did not expect Will Levis to slide as well. And I think a lot of that had to do with it. You know, Will Levis is projected in front of Hendon Hooker. Will he be drafted in front of Hendon Hooker? We'll have to find out. I don't know. But Will Levis slid. And Hendon Hooker, I don't want to say Hendon Hooker slid because he was mocked a couple of times in the first round, but the majority of people had him as a second round grade. But of course, you had Bryce Young that went number one overall to the Carolina Panthers. He was the first quarterback off the board. And if I told you this, guys, would you believe me? With Bryce Young going number one overall, he becomes the first Alabama football player ever to be selected number one overall in the NFL draft. If you would have asked me that, I would have said, no way, no, no. He clearly probably probably fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, you know, whatever. First Alabama football player ever taken number one. That's Bryce Young to the Carolina Panthers. So he goes, and he's off the board. You have the Texans sitting at number two. Are they going to go defense? Are they going to go quarterback? Are they going to go defense? Quarterback. They take their quarterback in C.J. Stroud, and they get him, and they draft him there. A lot of smoke leading up to the draft that the Tennessee Titans were going to move up to number three and trade with the Arizona Cardinals, potentially land DeAndre Hopkins, and also get their quarterback. They stayed put. They didn't do that. The Texans at number 12 moved up and had back-to-back picks at two and three. So the Texans get C.J. Strouth. They move up. They get Will Anderson Jr. What a haul there. I know they gave up a lot, but you get C.J. Stroud and you get Will Anderson Jr., who Anderson Jr. might be the best overall player in the entire draft you know, class. It's a heck of a haul. But Young goes one to the Panthers. C.J. Stroud goes two to the Texans. That's kind of what we thought was going to happen, right? Anthony Richardson then goes four to the Indianapolis Colts. Shout out my buddy Matthew Osborne, the biggest Tennessee fan that you're ever going to meet in your life. I saw a video of him that was in a group chat of us, uh, a a group chat of a a bunch of our our friends, and it was a video of him celebrating whenever Anthony Richardson was taken by the Indianapolis Colts. And I thought it was hilarious, so I put back, oh, look at Oz, he's cheering on his favorite Gator. But the celebration was because it wasn't Indianapolis taking Will Levis. You know, and again, I taught myself in as a Titans fan, like, hey, you know, this entire week, if Tennessee takes takes uh, Anthony Richardson at eleven, I get it, I understand it. Um, I still think that he's got a long way to go, but the ceiling is so high, probably higher than anybody else in the class, especially the quarterbacks. I get it if the Titans would have say put at eleven to take Anthony Richardson. I didn't want Tennessee to move up to take Anthony Richardson. But if they would have fell, if he would have fell to 11, I would have been okay with that. But if Tennessee was going to move up to get Will Levis, I would have hated that so much. And my buddy Oz, same way, not a Will Levis fan, he did not want the Colts to take Will Levis whatsoever. So uh, Anthony Richardson goes to the Colts at number four. So that's three quarterbacks in the first four picks. And then that's all she wrote, guys. No other quarterback was taken in the first round. You continue to move down, you get to... Uh, the Falcons, who could have potentially taken a quarterback, not likely, but potentially. The Raiders, who could have potentially, but not likely, because they addressed their quarterback needs this offseason. You know, they went defensive end, they went running back. How about Bijan Robinson, running back from Texas, going in the top ten? You don't see that every day, or running back in the top ten. Then you get to the Titans. Tennessee goes, and I was, <clears throat> I was sweating bullets, guys. I was sweating bullets. Me and Ryan Shepard in that press box, I was freaking out. But thankfully, they went the safe pick and they went offensive tackle, well, really offensive guard, and Peter Skronowski from Northwestern. So Tennessee, the Titans, did not take a quarterback. All right, They passed on Will Levis and Hendon Hooker. And you continue to work yourself back. What other teams are kind of in this quarterback conversation? At 20, Seattle, which already had a pick in the top five, and they went Devin Witherspoon, the cornerback from Illinois. They went defense first like we thought they would. But at 20, this was an opportunity for... Seattle to either trade back or take a quarterback. Seattle went to Jackson Smith Nigba, the uh, wide receiver from Ohio State, who was one of the best players on the board at that time. Okay, understand that. So Seattle did not take Hendon Hooker at 20. What about 23? Minnesota Vikings, a quarterback needy team. They take Jordan Ander- Addison, the wide receiver formerly of Pittsburgh at USC, and they take him at 24. And then you're looking at the first round. I mean, you know, these guys are set with their quarterbacks pretty much. Um, because they're the better teams, and, and there's nobody on the board except for maybe the Saints at 20 or at 30. Even they got a quarterback this offseason, but you know, the Saints didn't go quarterback. So once you got past the 23rd pick in Minnesota, you kind of knew that no quarterback was going unless somebody traded back into the first round. 
and that just wasn't the case on the night. So Will Levis slides. Hendon Hooker is not selected in the first round. And if you look at best available, of course, it's going to be Will Levis at number one overall at the quarterbacks. Uh, he's at number one. And then there's Hendon Hooker. So what does this mean for Hendon Hooker? When can he go? Well, you look at the first couple of picks of the second round that'll come up tonight. The Steelers have the first pick of the second round. They're not going to go quarterback. The Cardinals are not going to go quarterback. The Lions are likely not going to go quarterback. They've got the third pick in the second round. The Colts are not going quarterback because they got their quarterback. The Rams at 36 overall. That could be a landing spot for Hendon Hooker. And then it comes back to Seattle at 37th overall. They will take a quarterback. They will take, if they don't move up to get them already, they will either move up or they will get whatever's left from what uh, L.A. doesn't. And I think L.A., the Rams are going to go quarterback uh, with their first pick. So it'll be interesting. Watch for the one, two, three, four, five. Watch for the fifth and sixth pick of the second round, the Rams and the Seahawks. I think those two teams will take quarterbacks. And I've been talking Seattle, Seattle, Seattle the entire time and how I think that just makes so much sense to land Hendon Hooker. Um, I don't think Hendon Hooker will get past pick number 37 coming up tonight just inside the second round. So that is what I am projecting. But if for some reason he does, um, you continue to work yourself down here. The Titans are there at 41. If by some chance Will Levis and or Hendon Hooker on the board at 41, they're going to be gone to Tennessee. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, that is kind of kind of what I'm thinking right there. So uh, we'll see. It's not going to be long before Hendon Hooker's name is called in the second round tonight. I missed it. I thought Hendon Hooker was going to go in the first round. I thought that there was going to be run, a run on quarterbacks, and there was a little bit, but I did not anticipate Will Levis sliding all the way out of the first round. Three quarterbacks picked in the top four picks, but Will Levis slid, and I think that affected why Hendon Hooker was not taken in the first round. So we'll see. Hendon Hooker's going to be all right. Hendon Hooker's still going to go to a good spot. There's still a really good a couple of really good landing spots for him, but I think early in the second round, at pick 36 with the Rams, at pick 37 with the Seahawks, we'll see if those two teams want to move up or if they stay put, and I think quarterbacks are going to go there. So uh, we will have to see. Uh, when we come back, what about the rest of Tennessee, the wide receiver, Cedric Tillman, uh, Jalen Hyatt, what about Byron Young? What about a draft overview, overview overall? That is coming up next here to conclude a Friday Locked On Vols. All right, just a couple minutes left here of this edition of Locked On Vols. And, um, you know, guys, typically uh, it, for you late night crowd that like to uh, watch on YouTube or listen uh, around 11 o'clock, maybe midnight, I always put the episode up. I record the day before. I always schedule it to go out at 12.03 Eastern time just after midnight because, I don't know, that's just what I did when I started doing this podcast two years ago, over two years ago. Um, but a lot of you guys listen and watch when it comes out, especially on YouTube. Uh, you're probably wondering why it wasn't up there uh, you know, for, for this day. It's because, well, I was covering the Tennessee baseball game and um, when they were playing Mississippi State and had a 7-1 to lead, blew it, but Griffin Merritt walks off with a home run to straightaway center field in the bottom of the ninth inning. So I was covering that game. I didn't get home until about midnight um, Eastern time. And so, you know, recording this in the early hours. So getting it up there for you guys, you still have it for your morning commute. Uh, but if you were wondering where it was, that is the reason for it. But uh, going to be an exciting rest of the weekend. Tennessee has uh, four players who I think can go in the second round. If they're not going to the second round, they'll for sure be off the board in the third round, and that's a pair of wide receivers. You saw the run on wide receivers go. There wasn't a wide receiver selected at all until that 20th pick with Seattle taking the Ohio State product and Jackson Smith Nigba, and then there was that run of wide receivers. After the Ohio State product, you saw uh, the Chargers take Quentin Johnston of TCU. You saw Zay Flowers of Boston College go to the Ravens at 23. Lamar Jackson, a new contract, so he got a weapon. Jordan Addison went to the Vikings at 24. So you had one, two, three, four straight wide receivers taken, uh, you know, in the 20s, the early 20s of the NFL draft. So what that means is Tennessee's two wide receivers are part of the you know best available at that position. According to ESPN's best available, this isn't just straight Mel Kiper. I think this is a couple of them. Um, but uh, you got Jonathan Mingo of Ole Miss and Jaden Reed of Michigan State as the best available wide receivers right now entering the second round. And then three and four, you have Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman. So 
uh, those guys will come on. And at this point now, and again, it, it's never, you know, mock draft says this, this is how we're going to draft, or best available says this, this is how we're going to, this is how we're going to draft. Just because Cedric Tillman is the fourth best available wide receiver tomorrow or heading into tomorrow, he could be the first wide receiver taken tomorrow. That's just, you know, that, that it's, just, it's all about one team falling in love with one player, yada, 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 all that type of stuff. So if a team values Jonathan Mingo's skill set more so than Jalen Hyatt's or Cedric Tillman, then they'll take him. But if they're looking for speed to get over the top and stretch a defense vertically, they're going to take Jalen Hyatt. If they're going to look for an all-around wide receiver who can turn into a beast number one wide out in the NFL, they might take Cedric Tillman. And again, some of these, you know, Mingo and Reed are pretty good uh, options as well. But you have Jalen Hyatt, the third best available wide receiver entering the second round, and Cedric Tillman, the fourth best wide receiver available entering the second round. Uh, what about Byron Young? Well, when I'm looking at the best available things, I go over to the outside linebackers, which is you know, what I would consider Byron Young to be, a stand-up 3-4 backer, right? Uh, kind of that Leo. And, and his guys, this is why, again, you can't believe everything you see on ESPN.com. <laughs> funny uh conversation for another day but they got bj ojalari as the number one outside linebacker best available uh, bj ojalari plays the same position that byron young plays but byron young is listed under the defensive ends so i don't really i don't really know what this is i mean like keon white is a defensive end the best available but he's six foot five 285 pounds he is a traditional four three edge rusher right now byron young comes into number four on this list behind Derek hall of auburn and some other guy from northwestern but you know byron young is 250 pounds Derek hall is 260 pounds. This guy from Northwestern is 285 pounds. I mean, Byron Young should be over here at the outside linebackers with BJ Ojolari. But anyway, I digress. But Byron Young is technically considered the fourth best defensive end entering day two. But I think he is going to be taken in the second round as well. Uh, if you're curious about some of these other guys, these guys that I'm about to get into will not be drafted in rounds two or three unless something just crazy happens. Uh, let's go back to the fullback H-back role. And under best available, there's only one listed, which is interesting, but that is where Princeton Fant would go into. Offensive guard, you have Jerome Carvin that is listed as like the 23rd best available guard. So again, if he's taken, it'll be late, late, late. Um, and then you go to inside linebacker. Jeremy Banks is the 14th best inside linebacker entering day two of the draft. So, you know, we'll see exactly what he looks like later on in the draft. And then you go to safety. And I don't even think Trayvon Flowers is listed here, but Trayvon Flowers is another guy to maybe watch out for. A punter as well, Paxton Brook, not listed in the top four, but Paxton Brooks could potentially be drafted later on or he'll sign an undrafted free agent uh, deal. So uh, what I'm going to look for tomorrow, again, I kind of laid it out in segments number two, Hendon Hooker to go in the early second round, maybe the Rams, maybe the Seahawks there at 36 or at 37. I look for, let's just go and, and, and look at who's picking kind of here. Um, kind of like what we talked about the oh, crap. I hate pop-up ads. Uh, kind of what we talked about the other day. You've got the Panthers at 39th overall. I like them to maybe take a wide receiver. You got Tennessee at 41. They need wide receiver. Gosh, if Cedric Tillman would go to Tennessee, I'd be over the moon. I mean Jalen Hyatt too, but Tennessee needs a Cedric Tillman top wide receiver. And if the Titans took him at 41, I would love that. You've got so I've, I like the. The Panthers is potentially a team that will take a wide receiver. The Titans at 41 that would take a wide receiver potentially. The Patriots at 46 need a wide receiver. Uh, the the uh, the uh, the Lions have been high on Jalen Hyatt this entire time. They pick at 48 potentially. You can look at that as to be a destination. So uh, we will see. But that's kind of an outlook of what you can expect on Friday night for Tennessee Vols and, of course, throughout the weekend. But Overall, guys, first round is in the books, and you know the, the first two picks kind of went according to what we thought would happen. The Texans trading up made things a little interesting there, uh, but they went defense, got Will Anderson Jr. They made sure that they got the quarterback that they wanted, or at least available because Bryce Young was already off the board, and they got the best defender in the class in Will Anderson Jr. Uh, Colt staying put there at fourth. They take Anthony Richardson, not Will Levis. As a Titans fan, I wanted them to take Will Levis so bad. Uh, Seattle went defense is what we thought that would happen. The Cardinals thought they could go wide receiver there, but they went off at the tackle. Uh, the uh, the Raiders went pass rush with Tyree Wilson at seven. The Falcons taking a running back. Whew, that is risky business, but B. John Robinson is a good player. 
Uh, the Eagles trading up to get Jalen Carter. Of course, there's Darren Arrod at number 10. The Titans went off at the tackle. How about Jameer Gibbs going 12th? I like the game of Jameer Gibbs. I do. I think he's a good player, but Jameer Gibbs going 12th? I mean, this NFL draft had two running backs going in the top 12. Those were the only two running backs taken in the first round. Typically, you don't take running backs in the first round. You just don't. And, and it's uh, you know it's it's kind of it's it's why you don't pay running backs in the NFL because they're kind of a dime a dozen. But anyway, Jameer Gibbs, congratulations to him. He goes 12th overall there. You have the Packers that went pass rush uh, with Lucas Van Ness of Iowa. You have Broderick Jones that went to the Steelers. They moved up. You've got uh, the, the Jets went defensive help. Yada yada. Christian Gonzalez of that cornerback from Oregon. He went to the Patriots. Uh, Kalaja Kansi, that's a name that we know. Defensive tackle from Pittsburgh. He went to the Buccaneers at 19. And then, of course, the runner wide receivers that we talked about from 20 all the way down to 24. And then the back end of the first round is kind of like best available. Let's see here. Dalton Kincaid from uh, Utah, the tight end. He went to the uh, to the to the Bills to work with the well with with Knox. I think that'll be a really really good pick down the road. Miles Murphy from Clemson, who opted out of the Orange Bowl. Once upon a time, he was a projected top 10 pick. He goes 29th overall to the Bengals. Nolan Smith. That's a really great luxury pick at 31st or 30th rather for the Georgia from the Georgia Bulldogs to the Philadelphia Eagles. So uh, not a lot of surprises outside of Will Levis sliding. Um, again, I thought he was going to be picked in the top 10 for sure. Um, I don't think that I, I think where he's going to be picked is good for him because he won't have that. He'll, he'll always be re remembered as a guy that slid out of the first round or out of the top five, but this might be the biggest blessing to him in disguise because sure you miss out on some of that money, but if Will Levis is picked in the second round like he will be early in the second round, he won't have that first-round pick cloud hanging over him his entire career. So maybe that'll take some pressure off of him. But biggest surprise, Will Anderson Jr. or Will Levis sliding out of the first round, and I think that affected Hendon Hooker. So those are my two biggest surprises. NFL draft is a fun, fun time, and I cannot believe it. Donnell Wright is a top-10 pick from the University of Tennessee that is awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Locked On Vols. We'll come back Monday and we'll recap everything that was Tennessee, Hendon Hooker, Cedric Tillman, Jalen Hyatt, Byron Young, anybody else that gets drafted. And we'll have a blast doing it here on Monday's Locked On Vols. Shout out you everydayers. Could not do this without you. Appreciate you as always. If you, want to up, if you want to become an everydayer, then hey, I will see you back here on Monday here on Locked On Vols. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, subscribe anywhere you find your podcast. Follow us there and uh, set those notifications on. Every time I post an episode, you guys will be notified. If you're on Apple Podcasts, rate me five stars. Leave me a positive review. All that stuff really, really does help me. And uh, couldn't do this without you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. And we'll be back here on Monday's episode right here on Locked On Vols.